everybody! Welcome to a Wedding Wednesday Cricut Craft tutorial. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to my channel because I put out new videos all the time. Hit the bell icon that'll alert you to when I post a new video. Today I'm going to show you guys how we're going to make these tissue boxes for happy tears for your wedding. These make a wonderful little favor to give at your ceremony for all those beautiful little ladies that will be there and will be in tears because of your love. So let's go over to Design Space so I can show you where to find the file to do this and how to modify it. We're going to modify a file from Design Space Access to make this project. So all you do is go into your projects and I'm going to search for box. And it's going to bring up a ton of different style boxes, but the kind that we're going to use is usually referred to as a pillow box. So I'm going to scroll through here and we're going to find one of those pillow boxes because they do have a couple of different versions of them. And I know there was an Easter one, which might be the one we use. This one is kind of the style we're going for, but you'd have to change up a lot in it. So we're going to use the Easter one, which was just a little bit further down. And actually we could maybe use this one too, but I really want to show you guys how to contour. Here it is. So it's called bunny pillow box. It doesn't cost anything if you have your access, um, uh, subscription. That's the word I'm going for. So we're going to customize our box. So go ahead and cl hit customize and it's going to bring up your pillow box with your score lines. Now I'm going to make this a little bit bigger because it's going to be a little easier for you guys to see it. Let me put my grid lines in too to give you guys a little extra. So I'm going to work with an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So I'll need to make sure that this is in fact going to fit on there. Now we have this bunny cutout and we definitely don't want that. So we can actually just contour it out, but it's a, it's um, trying to get both the score lines and your box in the image. So we need to ungroup it before we can do anything or detach. In this case, we're going to detach them and we're going to just select this green box part and click on contour, which is in this lower right hand corner. All we want to do is contour out this rabbit. So click on the rabbit and then just close out. What that does is it just tells the machine that the rabbit isn't going to be there anymore. But instead, we want to have some way for the people to get the little tissues out of their box. So you could open your shapes here and get out a circle. And we're going to unlock our circle. And then I'm just going to make it kind of ovally shaped. You don't want to go too far over to the sides, so you want to make sure you kind of keep it fairly centered. I think that looks pretty good. You're going to select your oval and your card, and you want to click Slice. You can get rid of the gray oval, and you can get rid of the green oval because that right there is gonna be the hole for your box. Now we do need to make sure that we take the box and the score lines and reattach them. So go ahead and click attach. Now, right now you can't see the score lines. So if, you, if it bothers you that you can't see them, go ahead, detach them and select the box, right click and put send to back. And that's gonna bring your score lines right back up so that you can see them. And again, select both and make sure that you attach them. Now, just because it's green on the screen does not mean that you have to cut it in green. But again, I'm using an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper, so I know it's going to fit. So make sure that you know which size you are using um, before you do this. Now, you could write on this if we wanted to. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll just use tier. Uh, let's do... Uh, tissues for on the top and we'll just move this out of the way real quick and then we'll do four happy tears and we'll do that down under this but obviously they're too big so you want to size them down and oops and not move that but that's okay if you move it just push these where they go and what I'll do with these a lot of times is once I get them sized I will select the entire design and I will go up into a line and I will align them horizontally. That'll just make sure that they're even. And now we need to find a font that we want to use for the writing portion of this. So a lot of people ask, well, how can I do writing fonts? Nine times out of 10, 
The best way to do them is by using a Cricut writing font. So you go over here to filter and filter to writing. Now you do not own all of them. Even if you have access, you only own some of them. So you'll need to keep that in mind when you are looking at what you want to use them for. They do not all belong to you because this one is a multi-layer writing cutting and this is $4.99. This one is free. You can also print them if you wish. Um, you can also do that absolutely. Super easy to do. Nothing too crazy, but I think we'll just use, um, we might use Bad Bet, but We'll just find something just to show you guys here. I think this works. This is Be Happy. This is a Cricut font. So we'll go ahead and use that one for both of these. So we're going to look for a writing font. And we're going to scroll back down and we'll find Be Happy. And again, these are both free, so it's really nice. Both of these projects are totally free. And apparently we don't want to filter, so we're just going to search for Be Happy. And we'll select that. And we're going to make sure that this is set to write. And we may need to make sure these are centered again because sometimes when you do the writing, they will uncenter from your project. I don't know why they do that, but they do. So click select everything, click align horizontally, and you can see that I didn't touch them, but they did move. So if you do change them to a writing, make sure that you are going back in and fixing that. Now for this project, use a heavier cardstock. So we're going to go ahead and click um, attach because we want to make sure that the writing stays where it's supposed to be. So the biggest thing with this is attaching everything. Click make it and it's going to show us our project on our screen. So let's go and select our paper, which we're going to click continue and it's going to yell at me because I didn't turn it on yet. I do see a lot of people who will run into this where it doesn't turn on and they're really confused as to why they can't choose any of their materials it's because your machine has to be on so we're gonna let this thing turn on and then we can select our material now I'm gonna select a medium cardstock to do this one this one you're going to need to make sure that you put in um, the scoring wheel or the and but I don't have that so let me show you something if you do not have a scoring wheel click on edit tools which is right here click edit and you can click the scoring stylus now I actually do have the scoring wheel but we are going to just show you guys real quick how to change that but yes if you ever need to change out your tools if it's the scoring tools you can just click scoring wheel or scoring stylus but we're going to use the wheel on this one so click continue we'll get everything loaded and we'll get ready to cut I'm going to show you guys how to install your scoring wheel. So you're going to open clamp B and take out your fine point blade. Set that to the side. Now your scoring wheel looks kind of like your rotary blade, but it is not as sharp. And you'll see that it has that same top with this plastic on it. So what you want to do is drop your blade in, but make sure that the plastic and the gold piece is towards the back. So the plastic will be towards the front, the gold piece is towards the back. Close your clamp. And for this one, we also need to load a pen. I'm just gonna use black, but you guys can use any color you want. And I do recommend the Cricut pen. So we're gonna put the black Cricut pen in. I always hold the bottom of the housing and press with the, the top of the pen with my other finger. So we're good to go there. And I have loaded my paper onto a blue cardstock mat here. This is a light grip mat, and we're just going to load it. And we're going to hit the go button. Now with this one, I'm not sure whether it scores or writes first, so let's find out together, because I have not um, actually experienced it doing either one of these. So this should be pretty interesting. It looks like it is going to score first. So here it goes scoring. The scoring wheel is really nice in the Cricut Maker. It gives you a nice clean line. It's a little thinner line than the scoring stylus. And then they also have the double scoring wheel, which I don't have that yet, but I would love to get it. Um, I've heard many, many good things about it. So now it's ready to draw. So it's gonna go ahead and write out our words. 
Now I also want to make note guys that I didn't measure to see about how large this is truly going to be. I wanted to make it big enough that you guys would be able to see it. Sometimes some of the items that we make on these videos you will need to size them down a little bit just because I like to make them large so that everyone can actually see what we are doing. So you can see it writes pretty quickly. This is pretty easy to do. Now, if you're doing multiples of these, you don't have to unload the pen. You will have to unload your scoring wheel and your blade a couple of times as you go. But to just to do the writing, you wouldn't need to unload your pen unless it started to lose ink. This is the original one that came with my Explore. So I've had it over a year and it works fine still. I don't have any issues with it. I've used it a lot. So I wouldn't worry about it. Now on the screen it does prompt you to take out your scoring wheel, which you're just going to open clamp B, just like that, and you are going to drop your blade in. Now the blade does not have the gold piece, so you don't have to worry about lining that up, but you will need to tell the machine that you loaded the blade, so go ahead and click the go button again. It's going to detect the tool, and now it's going to go ahead and cut out our design. So you'll see it's going to start cutting. It's going to cut our oval first for our tissues. And now it's going to cut the little edge pieces. These boxes are just so much fun. I love how cute they are when you go to a wedding and you have that just little extra something that just makes it a little more special for your guests. And it really is a fun way to incorporate tissues or anything else into your wedding. So let's unload it. I'm going to show you guys the writing up close so you guys can see. Look at how nice that, that writing looks. So let's get this off the mat so that we can assemble it. So as the hot milk glue gun heats up, I'm going to I pre-fold everything. So you're going to see where you have your score line. So you have one down here, and this is the flap that will attach to this part. And then you have these little rounded edges right here that will need to be folded in. These are a little bit difficult, so you want to take your time to do it. But once you've done it a couple times, you'll get it. But I like to pre-fold everything before the hot milk glue gun even turns on, just so that it's ready to go and done. And if you are doing a bunch of these, you can totally easily pre-fold all of them before you start with the hot milk glue. And you could even do like an assembly line with these, so that's really nice. You could easily have somebody folding while somebody is gluing and somebody else is loading the Cricut. So you could definitely get this in with all the bridesmaids or the mothers of the groom and the bride. This is just a really fun family activity. So we'll get all that folded So in this show you here. So there's these little tabs and these need to make sure that you put them on the outside because that's how you can open the box again if you, you don't want it to, but that's where they go. They go on the, the outside here so that they look a little finished. But once you get it all together, it'll be puffy like this, but we'll wait till the hot milk glue gun um, heats up and then we can assemble the box. The hot milk glue gun is ready, so we're gonna go ahead and all we need to do is just put a little line, doesn't even have to be very much, just a small line, and I do try to keep it pretty flat, so I press the hot milk glue gun to it, and I've just put a small line there, and like I said, we pre-folded and we did that so that we could make sure that our lines lined up. I'm sorry about that, I had to, it didn't quite line up. Now what the heck happened there? We just had a moment. It happens. There we go. I don't know what I did there. So sometimes if you screw it up, you really can undo it, so don't worry about it. But I would say put the line um, kind of wavy. I didn't really think that through when I did that. Again, I do these crafts just like live, basically, and film it. So set it down just nice and flat on there. And you want to press it down. Now I realize right now it does not look very pillowy, but it will momentarily look pillowy because you're, this is where your sides come in. So you press in the side, and this is why I pre-fold because it's a lot easier to do this when you have pre-folded them. So you pre-fold and you pre-fold, and then you pop this side open and you fold this side in. But yeah, it's a lot easier if you pre-folded these to get this to work because if you didn't, trying to fold these when it's already like assembled is not going to end well. Now I don't glue the sides because you can insert your tissues this way. So I don't ever glue my sides on these, but you could if you wanted to, but I don't have the tissues to insert yet. So I don't glue my sides and then you can insert your tissues very easily 
right there and you just close it right back up and these are ready to go for your tissues. I think this came out really cute, you guys. It's so easy to do. You guys can make these to match your wedding colors. You can add pictures, you can do print on them instead. You could add stickers on the back. Whatever you guys want to do, be creative. But these are a really fun and cheap way to just add a little touch to your wedding and make it your own. If you guys have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. I'm always happy to answer those for you. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos all the time. Hit the bell icon because that will alert you to when I post a new video. I hope you guys had a wonderful time and happy crafting.